like a lot of farmers will tell you, the farm is, is a living, breathing thing, and it has to move on, otherwise it's done. And I didn't spend all these years doing what I'm doing to have it be done, so I'm just as happy to have them want to be involved to move it forward. We knew early on that Corey was going to be a farmer. It's just one of those things you just kind of innately know. And one of the first things we would do when he was in kindergarten, it was we would hand him a two by six, a pile of nails and a hammer, and say, go fix something. And he'd be over there just having a big old time and nosing around the shop. What I learned was abnormal later in life that I experienced such as, I would go to work with my dad. Most kids didn't have that opportunity. And I got to have a relationship that was, you know, really helped develop that passion for the farm. And I think I, in some level, took it for granted because that was just normal for me, you know, having those relationships with those people. You can also, on the grass seed and the wheat, open up the stem and find the seed head before it's become completely exposed and actually start to count for the future potential seeds to get an estimate of, of what the crop might look like for the year. I don't like to be stagnant. I don't like to stand still. I like to try and find better ways to do things all the time. I think the family adds into that. So I told my brother-in-law, Eric, when he came to join the farm that I knew I could take this farm and continue to grow it. But I have goals for myself I know I need to surround myself with good people and I need help to accomplish all those goals. And he fits a big spot that can really help and, and has helped us move forward to achieve those goals. If we haven't irrigated this year, we probably won't. Probably won't. So this linear has been stationary. Wait, why, why would you Mother Nature. She's, she's giving us our irrigation. In 22 there, I was approached by Mike and Corey to sit down and or come visit the farm. And when I showed up, uh, it was the family sitting here and, and I was approached to consider the idea of joining. To be very blunt, my statement was I'm not, I don't have any desire to be a farmhand. I want to be part of the success and the future and the growth of the operation. My wife and I have potential fifth generation, so I wanted to make sure that we we're growing that legacy. There's a lot of people trying to trying to tear ag down and, and, and we want to be something that's positive. And whether that be family, what we're doing on the farm. Yeah, 50 years from now, gosh, I'll be gone. But we would hope that this would continue on as an entity. Don't know what that looks like, really. It's not always about being big, but trying to do the right thing and to do it with purpose and, and, and um, take care of, of, of the land while we're here to take care of it. We tend to look at our farm um, as a business and our factory and our manufacturing plant happens to be outside in the dirt where weather can affect it. I, I see what the family farm is and as we grow, which we have to, you know, in order to keep this, this operation rolling to the next generation and to the next generation, you know, regulatory tax burdens, different things like that, we have to be larger. We have, we have to keep growing, but we cannot lose, uh, in my mind, we can't lose the, the soul of what it is. Because at that point, you might as well just sell. You might as well sell to somebody to, that's gonna become a, I don't like the term factory farm, but it, you're going you're gonna to sell out to a, a corporatized style operation.
Слушай.